it's Max, and in this video we'll be talking about the iPhone 12. The iPhone 12 is the iPhone for most people, and it is the mid-range iPhone in this lineup. In the iPhone 12 lineup this year, there's the iPhone 12 mini at 5.4 inches, the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro, both at 6.1 inches, and the iPhone 12 Pro Max at 6.7 inches. And so this is kind of the everybody's phone, and at $699, it's a really great phone. So let's talk about it. All right, so there are a ton of new changes on these iPhones this year, but the biggest change is this new flat design, and these edges around the corners are literally completely flat, and it really gives like a very boxy vibe. It just feels like you're holding a really nicely made, pretty premium piece of glass and aluminum. And so it's a great design and I really like this design. Some people have said that it kind of digs into your hands a bit. I haven't really noticed that at all, which is maybe me just being lucky, but I really haven't noticed it at all. And so I've really liked this design and it feels really great and very grippy and everything. So it's a pretty cool design and I'm really hoping that they stick with it for as long as they can stick with it because it's a super great design and it makes the phone feel really good in your hand and makes it feel super premium because of the build. So there is a matte camera bump, a glossy glass back and aluminum side rails. And that's the same on the iPhone 12 mini, but then on the iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max, there's a glossy camera bump, a matte back. I believe the matte back is a lot better than the glossy back. I mean, just look, look at look at that reflection. Like, you know, you, you know what I mean. And then on the side, the aluminum side rails are super great as well. They make it feel very nice. But then on the iPhone 12 Pro, it is a stainless steel side rail configuration, which I think is pretty nice. It makes it feel really grippy, but this phone feels great in the hand and the build quality doesn't really miss. Even though this phone does feel a little bit cheap just because it's kind of made of aluminum rather than stainless steel like the iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max, which means that it's gonna be a lighter phone. So it's a really nice weight and it's a great size for a lot of people. And let's talk about battery life because that really factors into the size of this phone, which is how big and how powerful of a battery can they fit into the phone. And it's great battery life. It's about eight and a half hours of battery life and a uh, screen on time usually. I think the battery life on this thing is really great and it's very survivable in a day of kind of for sure light usage, but for me kind of a heavy user on my phone, you know, looking at Twitter, looking at YouTube, looking at everything I might need to be looking at, I think it's a pretty great battery and a pretty great survivability on this phone. There are for sure phones with better battery life on the market, but this is great battery life for an iPhone. So. That's a great improvement over last year. So this was the first ever iPhone announced at a virtual event, and that's because of the whole pandemic thing. I think you guys know what I'm talking about there, but they did announce something and they used the virtual format to announce a ton of awesome things at the event. And so there's this new metal puck thing with a cable attached to the end of it, which plugs in to a USB-C power brick in the wall, and it snaps onto the back of the iPhone magnetically and it's called MagSafe, and I kinda love it. All right, so what is MagSafe? Well, I guess I wouldn't call this MagSafe. This is a MagSafe charger, but MagSafe is basically Apple's new way of charging the iPhone. It basically works like there is a metal puck that slaps on to the back of the iPhone magnetically. So this magnet array allows this $39 MagSafe charger. It charges it faster than normal wireless charging, so that's a big plus. And you can actually use this charger with other Android phones at that. And so that's kind of interesting. Of course, there isn't the whole magnet effect that's you know kind of only available on iPhone, but it is pretty cool. And this magnet array also means more accessories that can take advantage of this. And a bunch of companies have already launched MagSafe accessories, but for example, there's this iPhone case that you literally just put on and then it recognizes it and there's like an, an, an animation and stuff. It's like, it's it's cool. It's pretty cool, guys. Like it's, I like it. It's it's nice. It's like, it's a cool, it's a cool feature. But it'll be interesting to see in the future what other people decide to do with MagSafe. And I'll be interested to see the evolution of MagSafe over the years as Apple announces more phones and more devices and maybe even Q3 MacBook Pros with MagSafe charging. You never know. Okay, so Apple's marketing campaign at their event was that 5G just got real. 5G just got real. Because iPhones have 5G now. So I think it's a little bit silly that once iPhones get 5G, that's when 5G gets real. I think that's pretty discrediting to other companies who have worked so hard for their 5G. But you know what, 5G is fast. There is a catch though. If you don't live in the US, 
good luck getting an iPhone with a millimeter wave antenna. Okay, so millimeter wave is the fastest 5G technology that's available right now in 2021. And so that is only available in the US on iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro and all of the iPhone 12 models, which I find to be super unfair because more people live outside of the US than do inside the US. And so I think that that's really annoying and a bit of a ripoff to be marketing 5G, just getting real and everything, but then you get 5G and it gets real, but then you only get to have millimeter wave if you live in a certain country. I think that's pretty unfair and we're gonna have to figure out what happens in the iPhone 13 to see if they actually bring 5G millimeter wave to all of the countries around the world. Because if you're gonna be spending like even up to $13.99 in Canada on an iPhone 12 Pro Max and you don't get millimeter wave, like come on now. And now let's talk about the display. The display is super great. It is a Super Retina XDR display, which means it's an OLED display, which means it's a super, super great and very crisp display. And it's a great experience to use the display. And so I think it's awesome that they have kind of stepped up their display technology and their displays are even better now than they have been in the past. And so this is a 60 Hertz display. And when you think about 60 Hertz, you think like, well, come on, even a $399 OnePlus Nord has a 90 Hertz display. Why don't iPhones have at least a 90 Hertz display? Well, I think I have a little guess because they said it. They said most people will not notice a 120 Hertz display. So why put a 120 Hertz display in? Okay, what the heck? Everybody will notice that. It'll make it an even better experience for people and it'll make people crawl back to iPhone even if they were a lifelong Android user. You don't have to be a techie to notice that 120 hertz is the real deal. Apple optimizes the iOS experience for iPhones and so, you know, if you don't have 120 hertz, it's not the end of the world. But what is the problem is that even though they try as hard as they can to make, you know, your experience on iOS really good because, you know, you're paying a lot of money for it, but you don't have 120 hertz, you can't do that all with software. The screen needs to be at least 90 hertz in today's technology world. So I genuinely think that it's a bit of a ripoff to have people pay $700 for a phone that does not have 120 hertz display. But iOS optimizing it sort of lets it be a little bit okay. I don't know, let's see what happens in iPhone 13, but we'll just have to wait and see. I don't know. Okay, so let's talk cameras. The camera system on this device is super, super great. It is a wide and ultra wide angle lens, which is the same camera system as on the iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max, except the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro Max have a LiDAR scanner and a telephoto lens on there. Most people won't use that, and so this is a great camera system for basically everyone. The photos that are taken by it are great, the contrast, the color reproduction. Videos that come out of the iPhone camera have sort of set the standard recently for the best videos in the industry on smartphones. And so people are really gonna have to try to live up to that. But the iPhone 12 only has a 12 megapixel sensor on both lenses. And you know why I think that's funny? Is because the iPhone 12 still takes some of the best photos in the industry, some of maybe even the best photos in the industry. And yet these companies are trying to catch up with like crazy high megapixel numbers. And yet the iPhone always seems to have a better camera. So that's something that's kind of interesting to me. All right, so in summary, the iPhone 12 is a great phone and it's the iPhone that most people should be getting this year. If you're not a techie and you don't look for the best specs, then the iPhone 12 is gonna be perfect for you. And genuinely, if you're a techie and you look for the best specs, the iPhone might not even be great for you. You may crave something like an Android phone. And that's because the iPhones have never had, you know, the best specs on the market, but they are still great phones. The value proposition has been getting worse and worse and worse over time. But you know what, they're still amazing devices and Apple has done a great job this year especially and I'm excited to see what the future of the iPhone holds. That's been it, catch you guys in the next video. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe below if you're not already and comment below if you have any questions for me and I'll see you in the next video, bye.